All right, guys, Gemini, back with another video. And in this video today, I'm going to be talking a little bit uh, about the WrestleMania 31 <clears throat> build that we've seen so far. Um, <clears throat> first off, uh, I'm going to WrestleMania 31. I was given a free ticket, and I got free hotel uh, with one of my best friends. So, um, and yeah, I bought the Hall of Fame tickets to see the Macho Man get inducted. So yeah, I'm going to be there at 31. But what I really want to do in this video is I want to find out if WrestleMania 31 has the worst build uh, in history. So the only way you could do this is to go back and think about the builds from the previous WrestleManias and, uh, and kind of compare the build now compared to the build then. And that's the only way you can analyze and see if WrestleMania 31 has the worst build of all time is to compare it to past builds for WrestleMania, past roads to WrestleMania. So I'm going to start at the beginning, uh, comparing 31 to 1. Um, so let's see, for WrestleMania 1, there's no contest. They brought in a shitload of celebrities, including Mr. T, Cindy Lauper, Dick Clark, and Rowdy Piper and Hogan uh, were in their primes. And they set WrestleMania 1 up for months. They used MTV. So, <clears throat> 1 is... The bill for 1 was bigger than 31. Okay, WrestleMania 2. Uh, they had to do it in three cities. New York, Chicago, L.A. And they brought in Mr. T to fight Rowdy Piper in a boxing match. Awesome. They set Bundy and... <clears throat> they set Bundy and Hogan up in Phoenix when Bundy uh, put the squash on Hogan in the corner. So, they did a steel cage match out in Los Angeles which was epic. So I would say that 2 was a better build than 31 because at least they tried. At least they put some heat on the main event with uh, Bundy and Hogan, you know, setting up the dastardly heel Bundy, you know, puts a kibosh on Hogan, you know, in Phoenix, and it sets up the match. They haven't done shit to set up Roman Reigns and Lesnar this year. A WrestleMania 3, we don't even need to talk about. They built, Ho Ho uh, they built Hogan and Andre for months. So, obviously, the build for three was better. WrestleMania four, it was a, a world title tournament. So, and, you know, the Macho Man went over. So, not, I mean, they, they set this WrestleMania tournament up. It was in Trump, Trump Plaza. Trump Plaza was the hot spot in the 80s, you know, with all the boxing and stuff. So, uh, and then WrestleMania five, if you take the build, they built that WrestleMania five up for a full year with Hogan and Savage. So five, the build for five was better. Uh, WrestleMania six, you know, Hogan and the Warrior, they built that for, what, six months? So WrestleMania six was better. Hogan and Slaughter, I mean, at seven, you know, they they brought Slaughter back, you know, what, six months, nine months? They had plans to uh, sell WrestleMania seven, so seven was better. WrestleMania eight, you know, you had Flair and you had Savage and you had Sid and Hogan. It wasn't the greatest WrestleMania, but I would say that the bill for eight was better. At least me and Gene talked about the matches and got you pumped up every week. What the fuck do they do now? You know, WrestleMania nine, you know, is compared as one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. I'd take the build over nine, over 31. At least you knew what matches were going in. At least you got excited. At least you were thinking about the world's largest toga party. At least you know Hogan, Brett, and Yokozuna were going to be there. And WWF in 93 was bad. It's not much worse than it is now. Uh, 94, you know, WWF was struggling around WrestleMania 10. But you know what? WrestleMania 10 came. They built Brett. They built Owen. They built Brett. They built Yokozuna. They they built this shit up where they had two winners of the Royal Rumble. So 10 was better. Uh, 11 was a pathetic WrestleMania. But at least there was build behind the main event between Lawrence Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow. 12 it's not even close. If you take uh, uh, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels in an Iron Man match, everybody was excited about that match and then delivered. You know, 13, you know, it was built up because you knew The Undertaker was going to win the world title March of 23rd, 1997 in Chicago. And everybody wanted to see The Undertaker win the title because you knew, uh, you know, Undertaker... Won the world title March the 23rd, 1997 in Chicago at WrestleMania 13 Heat. Okay? But Taker hadn't had the belt since November of 91 since he pinned Hogan in Detroit at the Survivor Series. So everybody waited six long years for The Undertaker to win the title. So WrestleMania 13 meant something. 
and you knew Brett and Austin was going to be spectacular. WrestleMania 14 build was better. I mean, think about it. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels. You know, you knew Austin was going to win the belt. 15, you know, you got The Rock and you got Austin. I mean, in Philly, you know, a crowd that likes it hot and heavy. You know that they were, um, you know, people were going out of their minds. 16, you know, you had a fatal four-way for the belt. Triple H, The Rock, Foley, and Big Show. Everybody was pumped up about that, and I was there. 17, you know, the build was way better, if you think about it. Everybody wanted to see The Rock and the Austin and the Astrodome. 18, everybody and their mother was pumped up about The Rock and Hogan. 19, people wanted to see. They had like four main events. You know, what they have? They had Booker T, Triple H. They had Hogan, McMahon, Lesnar, Angle, and they had one more way up there. Jericho and Shawn Michaels, and there was another big match. I just can't think of off the top of my head. Bill was better for 19. People were pumped up about 19. 20. You know, you knew Chris Benoit was going to win the world title. You were pumped. They built it. They built Chris Benoit up. They built WrestleMania 20 up. WrestleMania 21, you knew Batista and John Cena were getting launched. You were pumped up about 21 in Los Angeles, the Staples Center. 22, people were fired up about. You knew that John Cena and Triple H were going to tear the house down. You knew Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon were going to just tear the house down. You know, 23, Shawn Michaels in the main event. It was built. You know, at 24, you know, Ric Flair's last match. You know, they built it. Career versus Shawn Michaels, you know. And they retired Ric Flair. You know, Randy Orton was on fire. John Cena was on fire. Triple H was on fire. They had a three-way match. In the main event, you got to see Edge main event at WrestleMania 24. Hold on, let me check my camera time. Okay, 25. You were pumped up about 25. It was the silver anniversary, you know, 25. I mean, you were pumped up going into this. As you knew, Orton and, and Triple H had been butting heads for a while. Orton broke into Triple H's house, or Triple H broke into Orton's house, you know, and you had a, you know, you, you, 25 was twenty five was personal with uh, Orton and Triple H. You know, he, Orton DDT'd. You know, Triple H's wife. I mean, 25, you were legitimately excited. 26, you knew Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. And they built that shit up at 26. And they delivered because Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker gave us that WrestleMania moment. 27 was not a good WrestleMania. Was not a good build. So I'll take 31's build and I'll compare it to 27 being flat. And that was proof at 27 that the Miz was not a main event player, and he's never been there since. Because 27, you could tell Cena didn't want to be in the match. So t let's take uh, 27 and 31 and say that the, the builds behind both of those are pretty bad. 28 was off the charts. It was in Miami. It was at Joe Robbie. Made events all over the place. You know, Triple H and The Undertaker in the cage. You know, The Rock and John Cena. You know, 29, they didn't really deliver that well to me. But you knew The Rock and John Cena were going to fight hard. And 29 was decent. I thought that they could have done better for New York. And 30, they built that shit up for what? So 29 was close to being bad. That's 31. 27 is as bad. And then, of course, you got 30, you know, where uh, everybody and their mother knew Daniel Bryan was probably going to win the title. And everybody was beyond stoked about it, beyond pumped about it, and then they delivered when Daniel Bryan won the world title. And it was epic, and The Undertaker got a streak snapped, and they built Lesnar and The Undertaker up. Point being, all this, there's only been, in my opinion, there's only been two, one WrestleMania with the worst build, and that was 27, and one that they, to me, didn't build all that well was 29. But you look at this year, you know, you got... Sting fighting Triple H, which is a match I want to see, but Sting's never there, so it really doesn't make the match personal at WrestleMania. You really don't want to get into it. And then, of course, you have, uh, what the hell else is going on at 31? Um, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, they haven't been face-to-face. -face. <laughs> There's no heat on that match. This is a world title match. This shit should be personal. You know, this should be like the Mega Powers exploding, and it's not. There's nothing behind it. You know, Bray Wyatt calling out The Undertaker, but no Undertaker anywhere to be found. Anyways, my point being, I feel that WWE has failed on their bill for 31. 
You guys leave your comments and let me know if you think 31 is the worst build of all times in comparison to the other WrestleManias. I'm Gemini. Peace the hell out.